David said he put water in the fresh tank of Voyager. So I am gonna use this sink. So we'll see. Yay! So I'm gonna take this rag and cool it off for him so he can cool off when he gets in the truck and he won't be traveling when it's all sweaty. Time to do a light check. Watch this. so nice to me. You're filming. <laughs> Ready to go? Ready to go. everyone welcome to another Thursday installment of big truck big travels welcome <laughs> well if you want to be ordinary about it <laughs> so we get a lot of questions about our size you know that we can't go anywhere can't do anything yeah you know so we're gonna show you how we roll that we're definitely not van lifers. Some would say we're van lifers on steroids. Right. And based on our traveling, we should be van lifers. Yeah, we really should. And there's advantages to, to being in a smaller unit, no doubt about it. But we're going to show you how we roll on the next five days as we head out to Idaho. Mm -hmm. But before that, we're going to roll the intro. Are you Welcome back. We got out of our campground. <laughs> and I'm not real what? sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure I wanted to say. You're not sure if anyone's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. After that opening, heading on the on the road. It's going to be a short drive today. And these next five days, we're going to kind of show you guys how we roll down the road. Uh, we're going to do a lot of variety of places to stop, really. Um, some homes, a uh, bowling alley, and a golf course. Oh, really? And a farm. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's... And I have scrapbook paper and stickers for all of that. <laughs> Good job. Of course. You know, I, I'm, that's what I'm here for, <laughs> so that you can use up all your stickers. But it's, yeah, it makes life interesting. It makes the travel day interesting yeah. and the trip interesting. We're not just hitting it hard 500 miles yeah. a day. We're not about the destination. We're about the journey. Yeah, and we want to take in that experience as we go. So we're going to show you guys what it's like. 
uh, good and bad, <laughs> to roll with us for the next five days. I don't know why I like a roundabout. I, I, I guess I just feel so European when I go through them. But Sandra's got this one right here in, I don't know where we're at, near Fr between Fredonia and Wichita, Kansas. Now, Sandra's hoping for a bigger one, a newer oh, one that has the has slopey curves. Big, hard curves. But this one does not have this, well, it has the slopey ones kind of in the center, but it's hard curves on the outside. She's not enjoying this one as much as I do. I just think roundabouts make so much sense. You know, especially in a in an area where you're gonna make a turn, we're gonna make that second one. And, but you don't get a ton of traffic. So it doesn't really warn a stop sign or a stop light. does not embrace the roundabout like I do. Now, this is when van life would be nice. You don't have to worry about that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But you do got to worry about showers, having a nice home-cooked meal. <laughs> showers, air conditioner. A bujo desk. Oh, yeah. A roundabout. Yeah, I wonder if it's new oh, wow. or old. Diesel 339? Yeah, that's pretty good. What is the TSD showing for tomorrow? 305. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Oh, look at this. You've got it easy. Except for that little barrier right there, but... Farm. <laughs> oh man, I just noticed that this uh, this is built up and yes. it drops off at least what 10 feet? 10 feet, 10, 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not 10 going inches. Over the Snake River Canyon, Evil Knievel, you know. <laughs> not yet, anyhow. Wow, at least a foot now. Yeah. Mm. So, where do they want us to park? I have no idea, but I think we'll need to check in with somebody uh, but he, it sounded like he had room for a couple spots so mm -hmm. of course you are kind of kind of leaning a little bit here in the yep. runoff okay All right. left or right I am guessing right, right but let me check some things before we go any further a good idea. Oh, uh, this might be a very picturesque place. 
like it's been greeted by the host. Where'd he go? It's a cute little dog. Well, there he is. So we can get into a lot of places with our size, but one of the things that we've learned is to not assume and to make sure that there's always an exit strategy. So here at this Harvest Host, we're um, wanting to make sure there's an exit strategy. So that's why I parked further back up. Uh, I didn't want to get stuck in a place and, you know, have to back up. But it looks like there's plenty of room here. I'm just not sure where they want us to park. Well, the way David is walking around, I'm thinking he has not been able to find the host. Not worried about turning around and having enough room to turn around. There's plenty out here on the farm. I've left a message, I've texted, and I've also done one through Harvest Host. So we'll see what uh, she says and uh, where she wants us. So the question's not can we get turned around, the question's where do they want us to park? Lots of room out here. Well, there he is. Now the question is where? So I guess they're not home? Yeah, there's no one home. And there's plenty of room for us to turn around, so that's not the issue. Yeah, actually there's another road that goes out and around. Yeah, so yeah. I was looking at the satellite view. Yeah, and it comes back around on this side. There's mm -hmm. a truck out there. Uh, so I don't know where they want us to park. So is there any place that, you lo that looks like we can fit? Oh, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds, well, but I, I don't know where they want us to. So anyhow, I, we're just going to have to wait, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean we could park there or anything. Yeah. So. Well, I think they think I am uh, brought them some dinner. Sorry, guys, ladies. I don't have anything for you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I feel like the Pied Piper. Watch. They think I brought them some dinner. I feel bad. They're, they're like following me. I, I'd say they are conditioned just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, um... I know they like apples. We could <laughs> chop up an apple, I but I don't know if know we have what enough. They normally, will feed them. So they're free range. They are free <laughs> range and looking for handouts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They tried me, and I was a no go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a no go. As hey, well. puppy. After wandering around the farm and making friends with the chickens. We decided on this spot here, actually not too far from where we were parked. It was level and out of the way, and we set up camp. About an hour later, the hosts arrived, said they were sorry for being late. We asked if this was okay, and they said it was perfect. Do we need any power? We said, nope, we are fully self-contained. We're just enjoying your beautiful piece of property here. They thanked us. And we had a great afternoon and evening. Well, after a hard day of driving three and a half hours, mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you do in your definitely non-van kitchen? Yeah, so <laughs> not to be a, um, a bad example, but whenever we have a taste for something, it, well, whenever we have a sweet tooth and we want a little, just a little something, something, and mm -hmm. we want some cake, and we don't want to just like make a huge cake and then freeze it, which it doesn't right, well. or buy a cake or buy at a, a bakery. Cake. So I have this really easy cake recipe. You take three fourths cup cake mix, a fourth cup water, and one egg, and you mix it all up and cook it uh, in the microwave for three and a half minutes at seventy percent power. And plus or minus, you know, like 10 seconds, uh, depending on altitude and, and humidity and everything. Mm -hmm. So I can bake a cake and get everything ready and served within five minutes. That's true. You get it done quicker than it takes for the whipped cream to thaw. Yes. And that looks very chocolatey what went back into the microwave. Oh, that is. So I always carry chocolate ganache with me. And it's, I mean, it's not like you know, chef quality stuff, and neither is this. It's a box cake. But 
it does satisfy the cravings. So with the ganache, I'll put like one part milk to get that hot and then do three parts or four parts chocolate chips and just mix it up. And then I'll, I'll put it back in the refrigerator, what we don't eat, and then I'll just rewarm it up. And this is the icing. I put a little milk in it because I know this was thick. So you're being a bad influence on a I'm, lot of viewers. I'm contributing to the delinquency of our friends of the channel. <laughs> oh, and to make things worse, so um, I always have ganache on board. Dark chocolate cake, ganache, and fresh strawberries. So there's something good about this. But a variation to this is the... Um, I'll take spice cake and dice up, or you'll dice up apples like little tiny with nuts in it, and same thing, three and a half minutes at 70% power, and then I'll do a buttercream ice cream, like a cream cheese buttercream icing on that. Another variation is vanilla cake with the chocolate ganache. Now that's not as instantaneous because it's better to have the vanilla cake cold and then put the ganache on there and have it cold. And then you put vanilla pudding, like the little pudding cups, you put the vanilla pudding on there. Oh, that's bad. And that's like Boston cream pie cake. And that's mm. really good. Now, we don't do this every night. No, no, you, you can't. But you had good strawberries at the store. Yep. Good excuse. Mm -hmm. And the final coup de gras. Whipped cream. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well. Out on the farm. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah. I mean, look at that view. Oh, I know. It is really nice to wake up to. Mm -hmm. So what's for breakfast? I don't know. What do you want? Cereal? Cereal? Got yeah. cinnamon rolls. Oh. Oh, I didn't think about that. You want cinnamon rolls and chai this morning? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Woo! Now one of the other things we do is we check our state of charge. And this morning, oh, all right, 72%. We had the ACs going a little bit yesterday. And the fan. So, nice morning. Great morning. It's pretty quiet last night. Uh, no road noise. Except for a tractor. Yeah, <laughs> but that's expected. We're on a farm. It is, yeah, and yeah. really neat. Uh, no, we're stealth camping, sort of. <laughs> as much as we can. Yeah, exactly, except that this stealth camping, the host knew we were here, mm -hmm. and no knock on the door at night. Well, actually, we did have a knock oh. on the door. Yeah. So they came by that's to true. check on us and invite us over to the back porch to watch the sunset over yep. the cornfield. And we had a wonderful conversation with this couple. They've had the farm for 180 years. Yeah, and, several generations. Yeah, and then they gave us some local treats. And so the chickens that we ran into, they also gave us a dozen of their fresh eggs. Yes. So that was really sweet. So that's the kind of knock on the door you want. You don't want the other kind. Exactly, because we don't stealth camp. We don't get those kinds of knocks on the door. But we're gonna get ready. We gotta get some fuel today. Yeah, we're right at a quarter of a tank. Oh, she noticed that. Yeah, first thing I do when I get in the seat, if I'm driving, I look at the fuel. Uh, gauge. Gauge. <laughs> yep. And she gauges how much <laughs> hot flashes she's going to do, right? <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're going to head out and then we're going to continue west. Um, we're going to go to Goodland, Kansas today. Ooh. Yeah. Last time we went to Goodland, we didn't stay because it was sketchy. Yeah. That was the Walmart. <gasps> yeah. Oh. We're going back to Goodland, folks. Yeah, oh, but I've got a plan. <laughs> I hope it worked.
roundabouts. All these big old <laughs> curbs. Look at that. Yeah, they've got some curbs all right. This is pretty though, bridge. So are you saying that Newton's, the way Newton has designed their roundabouts kind of curbs your enthusiasm oh, about a roundabout? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to break one of Newton's laws or something. <laughs> Oh, I don't like the gravity of that situation. <laughs> All right, so we just saw that the fuel was 312 across the street cash price. Yes, so I am going to check, check. the TSD app. Yeah, because one thing with the TSD app is it changes from minute to minute. Yeah, depending on what fuel does. So they don't tell you that this is locked in. Uh, they just tell you what it is at that moment in time. So let's see what it is here and uh, see if this station picks up on the app. It should. <laughs> this is where we came. Yeah, so this is 3.007. Wow. Yeah, okay. just a hair over $3 a gallon. That's I think that's good. Great. Yes. Yep. And we're going to fuel here. Yeah, on a trip like this, every, what, four days or so, if we're driving every day, we'll fill up. Yeah, because this is 1,400 miles. Yep. So we're good. All right, all fueled up. We're ready to uh, get back on the road. And uh, I get a lot of questions about why I wear gloves, okay? Now, all right, it's not that my hands are real soft and genteel and, I, you know, it's just that I don't want the smell of diesel to come inside the cab of our truck. Yeah, now sometimes you'll go inside and go to the bathroom and wash your hands. Yeah. You don't always go inside. Yeah, exactly. And so it, that, I do it for that reason, but the other reason I do it is that when I feel deaf, um, that's corrosive and I don't want to get that on my hands which then could get in the interior of our truck because this is and an extension of our home right. we want to keep it clean and we want to keep it smelling good and sometimes you know when I come back in from fueling and it's hot sometimes it you know we need all the help we can get to keep it smelling good yeah. <laughs> so it's a little after one we're stopping for lunch, and Sandra's going to warm it up in the microwave. But that's not the point of this video segment thing that I'm doing right now. Yes, what is the point? So, <laughs> so hey, peanut gallery back there. So the point is this. We were, we were driving along the interstate, and there's a rest area sign, and it says five miles ahead rest area it's a blue sign and it says four in lit numbers four parking spaces. like four parking spaces available now this is like five miles away from this rest area how do they know that there's four left here and now it's beside the point that they were they were pretty close for trucks because there is about room for about four more trucks here but that's not the point of this thing how do they know that there's no like cameras there's no monitor here i i want to know if you guys know i i want to know he wants to know he's le losing sleep over it yeah what she said <laughs> There's nobody behind him. What was that all about? Yeah. Now he speeds up. Yeah, I have no idea, but he started coming over about my driver's side quarter panel. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Well, I was trying to take a picture. <laughs> Sorry. Man. Crazy road driver. What, no roundabout? <laughs> no roundabout. 
Just a straight stop sign. You should remember this Walmart coming up on the left. I should. Why? Well, because this is the infamous Walmart in Goodland, Kansas that we went in and, and bought some groceries, came back out, had a great spot to overnight, but didn't feel right. It felt sketchy. And then we kept driving into uh, Colorado and got in there. Oh, and that's when we night. hit that big storm yes. in Colorado. It had to pull over and there was hail and a tornado and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, I remember that. Oh, man, that's where we parked right there where all the exactly outdoor right. stuff is. Yeah, so no room there now. Yeah, and it's not level, and it was early, too, in the day. It was. That didn't help. But it was just, it just felt for us at the time just a little sketchy. Feel right. Yeah, so we moved on, and that's one of those instances where, you know, if it doesn't feel right, don't stop, don't stay. There's supposed to be a, um, where are we staying? At a golf course? Yeah, so it's a Harvest Host. It's like a mini golf or something? It's so no, it's flat a, and there's it's a, a golf course out here. Yeah, I think it's got a driving range. I think it's got a, I think it's 18 holes, I believe. It's an actual golf course. <laughs> yeah, no, I've looked at golf courses before on Harvest Host, but none of them, for me, set up quite right. This one looks like it's gonna set up well for us to park and we're right by the driving range okay so instead of golf size <laughs> golf ball size hail we're gonna get dinged by golf balls themselves yes but we'll be on the other side of trees and the driving range will be going away from us supposedly and there's a golf course here out here somewhere yes somewhere they're supposed to be Somewhere out here, there's a golf course. Wow, this is really pretty out here. Look at that. It's got a sign and everything. Oh my goodness, it sure does. Yeah. Four star resort here. It's like a full size one. It does. 18 holes. Yardage and everything. People playing on it. Okay, so I see a bunch of cars parked over there. Yeah. So, so I guess that's the sign. clubhouse. I see a sign. Okay. I think this is the driving range right here. Feet. Arrive at coordinates. Okay, so wow. Established 1921. Historic. It's over a hundred years old. Tree lined roadway. This is fancy. So we're going to be on the windward or the leeward side of the trees. No, we're going to be on the uh, windward side. Now, do we check in? And yeah, we got to let them know. So where these cars are parked, is that where we're supposed to park? Yeah, that's kind of where we're supposed to park, so we're probably here just a tad early. Yeah, weren't expecting the time change. Yeah. I could have slept <laughs> an extra hour today. Oh, uh, actually that is true, you could have. Yeah, so butt's out of the way, and I want to make sure that our front door is not by that pile of um, dirt. So I think we're positioned. Yeah, just well, if right. we need to move, we can. Yeah, yeah. So here we are. Woo! This is it. Home for the night. Yeah. Nice. Oh, there's another one. Hmm. Okay, I don't 
don't know if these guys are alive. Let's see. Not really. Come on, shoo. Get out of here. Shoo, shoo. You. You need to go. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, so when I put the railing back and I moved this. Yeah. Four of them. <gasps> There's another one. There's another one. one, yeah. They were just like in there. Wow. They're oh. every. More. Oh, more! oh my goodness! Well, they're getting ready to <laughs> transport across state lines. <laughs> Is that legal with animals? Are these considered animals? Insects? Yeah, I don't. Invasive species? I don't know. All right, so it's travel day. Travel day. Nice morning. Not sunny. No. Not a lot of solar. But got to hit the road. Yep. Let's How do are we going to get out of here? Well, I'm going to do a big U-turn. But it's a lot narrower now than it was this morning, mm -hmm. so a lot more cars. Okay, sounds but, good. Yeah. Kids out there golfing, summer golf camp, I guess. Yeah, learning how to golf. Just we're out there. I can't believe they golf out here as strong as the winds were. The guys Man. had a men's club last night. It was blowing last night. I mean, I want to say 60 mile an hour winds, Probably. a few gusts. Yeah. yeah. And they were out there playing. They're crazy. Yeah, they're, they're crazy. Now, I also want to make sure we get down this road pretty quick because we're right next to the driving oh, range. Yeah. And they're just learning how to play golf. Yeah. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> All right, we're good. They're not going to drive it more than two Oh, I don't yet. know. Colton looked pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Colton was uh, real good. So that was great seeing him. <laughs> All right, so Kansas felt like Texas because it took us almost like, felt like two days to get out of the state. Now, they weren't two full days, you know, so we're finally out of Kansas. We're into Colorado, so I feel like we're making headway on our trip. You know, for some reason, when we enter this town, it makes me feel like I need to go. You need to go no. where? Arriba! Arriba! <laughs> <laughs> and we are gonna go onto this exit and go <laughs> at Arriba. Which is at 5,400 feet in elevation. Arriba is up. Arriba, okay. But that's not the go I was talking uh, about. Oh, you mean Andale. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a baño. <laughs> guys were killing me this morning about on the Facebook group, Big Truck Big Travels Facebook group, you're talking Whataburger. Like, you know, we're going through Colorado, I'm seeing all these cattle grazing, and everyone's talking about Whataburger. <laughs> Made me well, hungry. He's not doing without. Yes. He's got his Whataburger sauce, so we're having uh, patty melts. That's exactly right. So she zapped him in the microwave. Mm -hmm. and we're having patty melts. I am not gonna be without my Whataburger. <laughs> Guys are terrible. <laughs> terrible. All right, now we're gonna have lunch. <laughs> it's uh, across the yeah, way. Yeah, I'm trying to look and Over see there. what they are for. Uh, are for fuel? Fuel, 344. Wow, you, QT is 315. Yeah, but loves. <laughs> oh, oh, for the testers. Yes, so I don't like it when we get critically low on fuel or on chicken. <laughs> and right now we are critically low on chicken. I am down to my last two pieces. But it's not just any chicken no it's chester's chicken yes but we're getting closer to denver and i went on google maps and looked at the traffic and it was all red did so you I, look at the right direction apparently not because you are a little uh, directionally challenged sometimes miss navigator i know i'm dyslexic <laughs> and i don't know my right from my left but i do know east west north south that is true. I just don't know left, right. That's so true. I usually will tell David, okay, turn west, turn north, or something like that. So 
Yeah, I'm the navigator, and apparently, but I, this was to the good. Yeah, it was to the good. It so to the good. no complaints. This was so, great. So far, so good. But there is some red going north on 270. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think there should be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. Okay. Okay, Sat Brothers. If you ever have an opportunity to stop, we stopped at a couple, and they have really nice toilets in there. Yeah, you can. Dial up the temperature. Yeah, it's like a boudet and a heated seat and air dry and everything else. See, here's the traffic. A boudet? A boudet? Is that like, didn't you say boudet? I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I think you said boudet. Does that mean your butt's going to be scared? <laughs> scared. It's like boo. <laughs> or scared, uh uh. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a bidet. A bidet. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. You know, similar to what they say down in Australia. Good day, Mike. <laughs> Good day, Mike. <laughs> Ooh, a roundabout. Another roundabout. Those are becoming more and more popular. Mm -hmm. On the front, let's see, is traffic circle, mm -hmm. then onto the frontage road, which is, and then there'll be a loaf and jug on your right. Wow, this is kind of nice and fancy. This is very fancy. And do I go this way? Or no, no, go that way. That's why I say go straight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty area. Mm -hmm. Very residential out here with larger lots. Yeah. Look like a Google. Very nice. Very ponderosa -y. Yeah. All right, settled in for the night. What are you eating? Crumbs. <laughs> All right, so you got to come clean. How many Chester's chicken tenders did you get today? Like how many actual tenders or how many meals did I get for us? Actual tenders. Um, 32? Oh, my goodness gracious. But, I mean. 32. So they're a little expensive, but. <laughs> they're so good. They're so good. I know what we're having for dinner tonight then. Yes. Buffalo chicken salad. salad. Yeah. Not everything I eat is a Whataburger. <laughs> I'd like to, but it's not. This is a buffalo chicken salad, and it's with kale. We always use kale. And it's got tomatoes, carrots, some cheese, obviously Chester's chicken, mm -hmm. and some ranch dressing. It's delicious. Well, this is the second day in a row we have climbed 3,000 feet. I always go through and kind of check the, the damage to see what's fallen, and whatnot, but second day in a row that I found that our suction cups don't like anything over a 3,000 foot elevation climb. So I have this um, suction cup soap holder that normally goes above our shampoo caddy, and um, it doesn't like it. I guess the uh, expansion in air and it pops off. All right, bed test. Yeah, oh! We gained elevation today. Yeah, 3,500 feet. Okay, well, it feels it because I it's I, like right after a Thanksgiving meal, man. It's like it's hard. Plump. It's hard. Well, I, I emptied over half of it. Oh, did you? I really? mean, it was like sagging because the um, yeah, the so lamp, you took a lot out. yeah, the lamp actually imploded yeah, yeah. it. No, it's it's definitely nice and firm, so I got to pull air out. <laughs> All right, we're done with cereal at our boondockers welcome. Getting ready to hook up. Yep. Kind of cool outside. It is. I have my electric blanket on right now. <laughs> <laughs> so am I going to eat my parka outside? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely you're going to need your parka. This is almost June. <laughs> <laughs> we're a day away from June. So every stop is different. We're on about a five-day trip uh, going west uh, to Idaho. And some nights that are overnights, we can just stay hooked up, no problem. Um, here on this Boondockers Welcome, really nice place, super quiet last night. 
kind of up on a little bit of a ridge, but we had to unhook, had to level. Uh, wasn't bad, we, we just disconnected and I went ahead and uh, leveled us up. Uh, so we'll just get rehooked up and then head on down the road today. Started a little cloudy this morning in Cheyenne, but... And cool. And, and cool, okay. yeah. But it's really oh, nice it's right now. Gorgeous. It's like 71 degrees, low humidity, light breeze, sunny. Uh, really sunny, like <laughs> hardly any clouds out there. Which is a good thing because we're going to be boondocking again. This is what, day four. Yeah. And we got a little low this morning. So. That's right. Yeah, but not bad. I feel like so far on this trip now, I feel like we're really making headway now. Okay. You know, after three or four days, we've crossed the Continental Divide. Oh. So now everything's draining to the Pacific. <laughs> so you truly are heading west. You're that, on the, we're that's on the right. western half of our trip. That's exactly right. And maybe we'll start going a little downhill more often. Yeah. We've been climbing and climbing. Mm -hmm. I think we maxed at about eight, 8,600 feet. I think feet. so, yeah. And the Continental Divide was at seven, and then now we're at uh, 67. Yeah, so maybe we'll get even better gas mileage, fuel so. mileage, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so good trip. Um, so this trip's a little different. We've been staying at uh, either Harvest Toast or Boondockers Welcome um, every single night, yeah. and it's been different. Oh yeah. Every night's been different, you know. Mm -hmm. It's we've stayed at someone's house, we've been on a farm, mm -hmm. and uh, tonight we're going bowling. What? Yeah, we're gonna be at a bowling alley tonight. Mm, okay. Yeah, so we're gonna do that uh, tonight, and okay. uh, yeah, so it's a little something different mm -hmm. every single night. Pretty cool. But that's what you get when you're traveling with us, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> So are we ever going to stop at Walmart? <laughs> no. <laughs> but we'll be in a town tomorrow okay. where there'll be a Walmart. Okay, good, because we're getting low on milk. Yeah, well, I know we're not low on Chester's chicken. No. We've been seeing signs for Little America. It's like Walt's rug. <laughs> so we're here in Little America. They got their own exit. And it's literally like a little town, I think. Mainly it's a big truck stop and it's an RV park. But we saw 75 cent cones. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're going to see what that's all about. All right, as advertised, 75 cent look cone. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is the little one. All right, so how much was that? 75 cents. All right, that's a 75 cent cone. Oh my God. That's amazing. Look at that. That's 75 cents. That's pretty cool. All right, so first off, this is like the first time that we've seen something advertised and it actually, that seemed cheap and it exceeded our expectations. Yeah, <laughs> and this is way better than the wall drug nickel coffee. <laughs> yeah, or the free water. It, it was worth paying the extra 70 cents for this. Yeah, no kidding. These, and it's good ice cream too. Mm -hmm. So apparently this Little America is like a, a Wyoming... Um, it's like a wall drug. Yeah, it's know. like a, an establishment here. It's been around since the 50s, apparently, mm -hmm. and serving travelers and yeah. such. And it is literally like a little city. So, all right, we're going to enjoy our 75-cent cone. This has got to be one of the best deals in America. It's definitely the best deal in Little America. <laughs> We're back on the road, and we've been on the road for, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, and he is still talking <laughs> about that ice cream cone. That was the best value <laughs> that I, I, almost that I've ever had. And 
and it was a billboard on the interstate that said 75 cent cones. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that's just a ploy yeah. to get you in, right? Yeah, we were expecting the little tiny ice cream yes, cones, which we, I would have been fine with. I, I would have been too. <laughs> that would have been nice, nice little break. Mm -hmm. little, but it was delicious. It was cool and creamy. And the cone was fresh and crisp. Oh, I'll man. give you that. So. It was really crispy. But we still have another, what, 60 miles to go. Yeah. So. And she's got to listen to me <laughs> I do. rave about this because that's incredible. I mean, that was just, that was amazing. It was. I just got to tell it's just amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that made the trip. Right this there. This whole trip. The whole trip. All 1,600 miles for that 75 cent cone. Oh, I'm going back to January. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's like 80, well, no, we're at like 80, almost 9,000 miles since January. That's right. That's exactly right. So 9,000 right. miles, that 75 cent cone made your trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you just, a good deal like that, you cannot minimize that i mean you just that you can't take that for granted that's incredible in this day and time after covid you know and the inflation mm -hmm. and it's 75 cents and it was like big it's huge yeah yeah it's a nine thousand mile cone oh. <laughs> i've got 59 more miles to hear about it. oh yeah <laughs> supposed to be a bowling alley around here? Yes. I think it's the only one. <laughs> a, oh, there it is. We went to Edge. In one quarter mile, arrive at 2631 Wyoming. There it is. It's next to the storage facility. Oh, good lord. Are we yeah. going to be able to fit in there? Yeah. Where? Um, on this back side right here. And how yeah. are we going to get out of there? Well, we go, we just go straight. And how do we exit? We're going to have to back out of there? No, no, no. I got a plan. Ugh. I got a plan. Oh my gosh. Edge of town. Well, that, that's the truth. We are edge of town. We are at the edge of town, definitely. So, don't don't freak out too much. Oh, too late. <laughs> Spare me. Oh. The, uh, <laughs> oh. well, at least it won't be busy in the morning when we leave. No. So you're gonna back in there. Yep. Okay. We don't hit this car over here. Good thing he's inside bowling and not looking. Yeah, really. Yeah, because I'm going to go inside and ask them exactly if they care. Oh, where are we parked? Yeah. Now, was it on the instructions on the uh, Harvest Host site? Uh, it was to just come in. I know <laughs> I know that we park back here in this uh, gravel area, mm -hmm. but I don't know exactly how, you know, they want us positioned exactly. Leave it here and go check with them and see where they want us specifically if they care. So, kind of nice. Might be quiet. <laughs> are you kind of are you kind of so, bowled over with uh, emotion right now? <laughs> Did I strike out or? <laughs> Oh, go check in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a hedgehog out there, right in our backyard, so to speak. And Sandra is going to hunt some wildlife. We were just getting ready to have some dinner, and I looked outside and uh, saw him peeking over the ridge line. And she's bound and determined to want to try to get a good picture. So now she's stalking him. Hope she finds him pretty quick because I'm hungry. All right, nice morning. A little cloudy, but not bad. Mm -hmm. It was cool last night. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Had a nice time bowling last night. Yeah, that was fun. We hadn't done that in a long time. Long time. I can't believe she beat me. Well, the first game. Yeah. And I got tired on the second game, gave up after about the fifth frame, and he finished out both games. That's right. <laughs> We're uh, just, what, 250, 60 miles from Twin Falls, mm -hmm. and that's our next stop for the next week. Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no knocks on the door. Uh, we did all harvest hosts this time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really enjoyable. No stealth camping. No. Kind of hard for us to stealth right yeah we're sneaky but not that sneaky but we wouldn't do that anyhow no. uh, that's just not right that's um, not who we are yeah so that's why uh, we really like uh harvest host and boondockers welcome yes mm -hmm. both of those guys yeah so we travel kind of like a van life or a smaller class b c kind of a thing mm -hmm. but i don't know we're definitely not no I'm a glamper. <laughs> yeah. I like my hot showers. Definitely. I like cooking meals. Yep, sitting in our recliners and yeah. just chilling when we get a chance to do that. Yeah. My hat's off to those van lifers, but that is not the life for us. Yeah, definitely not. Mm -hmm. So we're going to head on. And uh, actually, because we're here at the uh, bowling alley for the Harvest Toast, we're going to get rolling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Poor David. We're not even on the road for five miles, and it sounds like it's raining outside. There's so many bugs on the windshield that it's just, you can't really see it, but it's just really yucky. So driving on a nice day is always great. Nice. <laughs> but um, this the road going into Salt Lake City mm -hmm. is sort of icing on the cake. Yes. I mean, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I um, I really like that drive. I know we've done it once or twice before, but I I forgot how pretty it really oh, is. Oh yeah. Um, just gorgeous with the mountains. You're coming right down through the valley, and it's it's really nice. Because we're heading up to Idaho, mm -hmm. we turn off before we get to Salt Lake City. Yeah, we kind of cut the diagonal. So instead of going over and up, we just cut the diagonal and completely missed Salt Lake City, which yeah. I love driving through Salt Lake City. It is so pretty to see the, the skyline and then you've got the mountains in the background and sometimes the snow. There's Most of it's gone though, at least here. Yeah, on some of these mountains. Yeah, but it's so pretty to drive through. Yeah, it really is. And you get a view of the Great Salt Lake mm -hmm. uh, every so often. Mm -hmm. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's that's kind of tough because um, I, I like uh, I like driving through Salt Lake City. But like you said, man, driving that bypass yeah. on 84 is really nice also. Yeah, that's if I had to choose pretty. between the two, I, I'd have a tough time with that. So yeah. I'm kind of glad that when we do come through here, we, we take different ways, um, you know, which we always try to do. We try to, you know, go a different way every time. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's, looks like it's gonna be nice all day long. And yeah. as we uh, get further, closer, west, north. Yep, both of those, north <laughs> and west. I can't wait, I'm excited. Yep, it'll be fun. Okay, half mile. So you said this was full hookup? Full hookup. Right. It's a regular commercial campground. Wow, a real campground like that normal people camp in. <laughs> That's right. Boy, nothing but the best for us, oh, huh? you know it. Full week, full hookup, oh yeah. <laughs> now I did make these reservations like months and months ago. Hmm. So um, I'm really hoping, I talked to someone there. I really hope they sort of remember our size. And we took notes, you know, put it in our file. Yeah. And, and you they, haven't talked to them recently or no, followed up? Just I to make not. sure the campground's even open? I, well, I hope it's open. Google says it's open. Well, of course, anything you see on the <laughs> internet's got to be true. That's right. Oh my goodness, look how tight those spots are. 
Are we going to be able to get in? They do look a little snug, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I measured things, and there's a few sites here that I think will fit us. Oh, jeez. Hot flashes. Oh, my gosh. Look how tight it is in here. Look at, it's the Oregon Trail campground. So that's kind of like cool, right? We're oh, on the Oregon Trail. That's very cool. That's when uh, campers were a lot smaller. <laughs> Just a little tiny covered wagon and a couple of horses. That is very true. Let me get past this building like they asked us to do. So we don't want to block everything like their entire business. All right. And they have these posts on every site. Yes. We have arrived. I do not see how we are going to fit in here. Thank you.